Welcome to the Beacon of Truth broadcast with your host, Pastor Reuben Esch. 2,500 years ago, the prophet Daniel looked down through the annals of history and gave God's faithful remnant this promise. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Beacon of Truth Ministries is committed to presenting the whole counsel of God's Word. We exist to advance the kingdom of God in the hearts of individuals who desire truth without the opinions and traditions of man. We pray that the following message by Pastor Esh will inspire you to greater fellowship and intimacy with God. Now, here's today's broadcast. Greetings and welcome to the Beacon of Truth broadcast. This is Pastor Reuben Esh, and we're doing a fourth session here with Brother David Hogan, the missionary from Mexico. Brother David, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you all. God bless you all. It's been a real blessing to hear Brother David's testimony of how he got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he shared in the last session how the Lord took him to Mexico almost 40 years ago. Him and his wife, several small children, and they dug their roots in and began to, to preach the gospel to the indigenous people of uh, eastern central eastern mexico since that time 40 years ago they've seen a great move of god they've seen almost uh i think it's been over a thousand churches that have started in that area they're seeing hundreds of converts come to the lord every month new churches are starting up all over the place down there but one of the things that brother david has been known for over the years is to, to believe God for miracles, for healings, for signs and wonders. And also, uh, there's been reported uh, numerous occasions where the dead have been raised in Mexico. And I want to talk about some of that here today in today's broadcast. But I want to read to you a verse out of Mark chapter 16, where most people that are in the full gospel circles raise full gospel or familiar with the scripture verses in Mark chapter 16 where Jesus told his disciples to go into all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. And then he goes on to talk about signs that will follow the believer. And uh, this is a familiar portion of scripture to many. I'm not going to take the time to read it because I want to zero in on another verse. At the end of this chapter, verse 20 should be the testimony right. of every believer. And it talks about after the disciples received this instruction from the Lord, after he had ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God, that the disciples went forth, they preached everywhere, and the Lord was working with them. That's right. Those are the words I want to zero in on. God was working with them. And I'll tell you, if we can get a hold of that as the church of Jesus Christ today, there's never been an hour that it's more important that we work with God and God works with us. As we submit to Him, as we draw nigh unto Him, He draws nigh unto us, He empowers us. But it goes on to describe how the Lord worked with the disciples. It said that He confirmed the word that they preached with signs following. And I believe if we want to make a difference in our generation, in the field of ministry that God has called us to, we need that anointing where the Lord confirms the word that we speak on His behalf as His ambassadors, as we re represent Him. The Lord confirms those words with the power of the Holy Ghost with signs following. So, Brother David, I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell me how you got the power of God moving in the mission field in Mexico. Uh, let us know. Give us the story of, 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 of a dead raising. I want to hear about that. Does right. God still do that today? Yep, He does. All right, now I want to I wanna start it's, uh, with a Bible verse also. Uh, thank you for letting me come. Thank you all. God bless you all. All right, now, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 3. Uh, I want to answer the question, but I, first of all, I want to read the Bible to you. All Take right? your time, brother. It says this right here. For though we walk, live in the flesh. That's everybody. We, we're all living in the flesh. Uh, we're, we, our, our bodies are flesh, right? We're not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh. See, we walk in the Holy Ghost. I got myself born again, and it works. I got myself forgiven. I am a believer. 
I believe that God has put my sins and offenses against the kingdom of God. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, he has cast it into the depths of the ocean. It's a long ways away from me. That doesn't make me an awesome person. That makes me a forgiven person. Yes. So, I've got to figure out how to stay away from the flesh, the walk of the flesh, and how to get into the walk of the Spirit. All right. We're not carrying on our, according to the Bible, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, we're not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh, and we're not using mere human weapons. Okay. So what do we, what's, our, what's at our disposal? You just said, uh, Mark 16, it, you know, uh, in the name of Jesus, we are to heal the sick and cast out devils and uh, take up any deadly, uh, drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt us. Uh, uh, if a serpent bites us, it won't kill us. And uh, I believe that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're, but the, uh, verse 4 says, the weapons of, of our warfare, our walk in the flesh, they're not carnal. They're not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God. That's right. For the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. Now, I'm just going to tell you right now, I refute the strongholds of the devil in the name of Jesus. Principalities, powers, governing and ruling spirits, the Lord Jesus rebuke you. Yes. In Jesus' name. And so, when I was younger, uh, I didn't, I didn't know uh, how to seek God. I, so I started. I went to the Bible and took it apart. Da, 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 da. So how did Abraham seek God? How did he know to follow God? How did Moses know? How did Elijah know? How did Elisha know? How did Joel know? How did Job know? How did Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John know? What did Jesus do? So I looked at all these men uh, over the span of all these thousands of years, and all of them had a thread that was similar. They sought the Lord with prayer and fasting. So I, my wife and I made a decision that we would learn, try to learn how to do that. And you have to take these baby steps. I mean, you you look at you look at life. It's similar to the walk of the spirit. You you can't just jump up and run a marathon if you're a brand new born baby. You have to be fed milk. You have to be over time. The process of time goes by, and you learn how to walk. You learn how to live, sit upright, do things. Uh, there's a there's a war. In the spirit, and we are, we we start out really weak and young, and don't know things. So, so the process of growth is what I sought out to try to figure out. Uh, and I did. I, I am doing that. I still am. So my wife and I started with these fastings and these prayers and. Uh, first, it was hard. It's hard to fast. It's hard to do without food. And uh, wow! And and so as I took the Bible apart, I wanted to. Uh, I, I looked at all these miracles. There's a lot of miracles in the Bible. I mean, there are lots of them, all different kinds of categories and different types. And so I wrote all of them down on paper. Now you got to understand that took a minute. So, I, so, but I had a minute. So I took the minute to seek God. And I wrote down all, all these categories, these different types of miracles. And I'm studying them. I really am trying to find God. I want to know what does he want with me. Because in the last few uh, programs we have seen, I got saved first. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I got called to Mexico. Then I got all these visions about Mexico. And all of those things are wonderful. But that doesn't mean you can do the job. You have to learn how to do the job of the gospel. That's right. The wisdom of God's needed. That's right. You, 
You, got, you have got to, I mean, you can be a gifted, awesome, you can be one of the best orators there's ever been, but that doesn't mean you can raise the dead. I'm telling you. But I also believe that every Christian has it available to them. That's right. Uh, so, uh, we started fasting and praying, and, and you know, and his life has it. I, I know everybody listening to me, you know that you live life and circumstances happen around you. Things happen, events happen that you don't see coming. And, and it was monsoon season in Mexico, you know, and, and we don't have very many churches. We have a couple of churches. I'm brand new in Mexico. I've been seeking God, wow, and things are just not working out really fast. It's slow and tedious. Now, it takes patience to work with the mercy of God. I can tell you that right now. You might as well get ready. If you don't, if you don't want, if you want it just quick, you know, go down to the store and get you a can of biscuits and just pop them open and throw them in there and have those quick, thick, you know, five-minute biscuits. But not me. I have figured out that let's go to the store and get some seeds. Let's prepare our ground. Let's put our wheat in the ground and let's grow it. Let's tend it. Let's harvest it. And then let's make that pure whole. Oh, I, I tell you, I personally believe. Let's let's do it right. So the McDonald's ninety seconds or less pr- principle doesn't work <laughs> for the kingdom. Yeah, it doesn't work. I just don't believe it at all. <laughs> I, I really don't believe that. I mean, and the mentality right now of the modern world is, you know, give it to me my way in just a couple of minutes. Well, that, that's just not how it is with God. Lose yes. it. Lose it. Go to the Holy Ghost and be patient. Love him and trust him because he has your best interest at heart. God does. Yes. And so you got all these monsoons going on. I mean, the rivers have risen way out. There's no levee systems like you have here in the United States. And uh, the water's like 40 feet deeper than it normally is. And it's scary and dangerous. And, And the people where I live get all their water out of the river. So the kids go down there with buckets. And one of the kids fell in, got lost. And so they know, uh, the people know me. I've been there a while. And they know that I'm a really good swimmer, athletic guy. Now, this is normal life, accidents. Okay. So I went in there and got my flippers and my mask and that. And I go down to the river. And man, there must have been a thousand people on the bank already. I mean, it was lots of people. And I look, and there's three guys in the water. And so I just got myself prepared, and I just jumped in the water uh, with these three guys. It's four of us. And all these people on the bank are trying to tell us how to, how, how to look for this guy. But there's only four of us in the water. See, this, this is how it is in God, man. If you want to find the truth, you're going to get in that water. Yes. And you got to search it out. And so uh, we found, I actually was the guy that found this kid, and he was one of those kids that I've been witnessing to uh, for a while, and he was dead. He drowned. I pulled him up, you know, out of the water. We put him in this little boat and brought him to the bank. And, uh, oh, man, I got there. And the mom is screaming, the, the, the dad, the uncles and aunts, the family, the kids, the brothers and sisters, or you know, and that. And so I said, you know, I'm going I'm to excuse myself. And as I'm leaving, God spoke to me. Now, this is that voice that spoke to me on that jet y'all heard about on a few sessions ago, uh, this audible voice. This voice spoke to me. And said, pray for him. I'm going to raise him from the dead. Now, think about it. He's been in the water about an hour. He's dead. He's gone. What have I been doing? I've been seeking God so that I can be put in a situation where I can raise somebody from the dead. But what what people that I get around don't realize that that that's actually a human being that died. And, and all the family, the intensity of the loss, it, it's pretty hard. Now, I'm going to be honest if that's all right. You all right with that? I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, I'm not normally afraid, but in that, in that 
particular moment, the fear of man got to me and I didn't pray for that kid. Now, all right, this is disobedience. This is not a good thing. Uh, I felt ashamed and afraid of the gospel. I felt afraid of the people. The what if it don't work? The yeah, but, 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 but. Well, and I left. I left him dead. And there's no doubt in my heart, my personal heart, if I would have obeyed God, I'm pretty sure that kid would have come back to life. Because I heard, heard God speak to me. Now, by the time I got home, which was like from the bank of the river where all this was happening, it was probably 10 minutes, maybe 15. Uh, by the time I got back to my house, I was so disappointed with myself. Uh... I just went and sat down in a chair, and I didn't move for three weeks. Okay, that, that's, that's pretty hard. I didn't eat. I didn't shower. I didn't participate with the family. I, just, I was so, I felt rejected and de- dejected. Uh, I, had, I had disobeyed God, number one. Number one, that's the problem. I had let my wife down in family for the reason why I left my job, America, what we're doing was to be obedient to God and to help people, and I had disappointed that. I had let myself down uh, from what I thought our goals was, what our purpose was, what we were doing, and uh, boy, wow, I, and I didn't know that that would happen, but see, this is a spiritual war. And, and until you figure out that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but you are actually in a war in good and evil. And, and God's using us, hell's against us. And at this moment in my life, I'm gonna have, I will be honest with you, hell won that one. And I lost. And the, the, the dejection, boy, wow, it was, it was my own personal, uh, I'm pretty rough on myself because uh, I, I hold pretty high standards. And, uh, but I sit there for three weeks. Finally, my wife, I tell you, I am so blessed to have a good wife. My goodness, heaven, wow, has blessed me. She came and grabbed me by my front of my shirt and she told me, I've had enough of this. You're fixing to get up. And we're either going back to Louisiana you're going to get back and, and that, get that job going and make us some money. Are you going to get out there and preach the gospel? But this right here is over. Now, that was pretty courageous on her part. It was. <laughs> yeah, it was. That, 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 she's, she's just not that type of person to be that aggressive with me. And she, but she loved me. She loved God. She did see the failure, but she, she also saw that we're humans and we need God. We need God to help us through and seek forgiveness from God and forgive ourselves and move forward in the mercy of God. Now, that's got to be done. And there's lots of people out there listening right now that's living in that spun-out world of failure. Well, I got some news for you. The success comes through failure in how I believe. I believe that we need to take the weapons of God and we need to cast down these thoughts, these intents, these arguments of the devil. Uh, look here in this next verse. It says, verse 5 says uh, of 2 Corinthians 10 says, In as much as we refute arguments. Now, hell had a pretty good argument. I disobeyed God. Theories, reasonings, every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And let me go, go ahead and tell you what the true knowledge of God is. Jesus loves me. Yes. And, and that doesn't give me a right or room to be in error or to make mistakes. But, but being a human, uh, it looks like I'm subject to mistakes. So God has provided us with mercy and forgiveness. Wow. And, and I have to walk in that and act in that myself. So here's how it went. I'm just going to be honest with you. I got pretty rough, uh, pretty angry inside at my wife, but it wasn't her that made the mistake. It was me. So I went in and took a shower. I had to eat in three weeks. 
And I got in my truck and I went out. I was pretty angry. I just want to tell you, I, I'll just be honest with you. I, I, I was not in the best of conditions, to tell you the truth. But I went to the end of the pavement, then went to the end of the dirt and the trail. I just started walking and I ended up in a village. And the people came running up to me because I'm American. And I just started passing out tracts and talking to them about Jesus. And, and the mercy of God and the forgiveness of God came to me. And I started actually started my life new again. Wow. Yeah. And, and I, I went to heaven. And I, when I got home, I told my wife how awesome it was what she did. Thank you. It was a blessing. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, and wow, God touched me out there and, and all of that. And then I, we sat and prayed together, my wife and I did. And I made a vow and I got it. And I'm going to tell you what it is. I won't fear man again. And that's why y'all see me so courageous, so aggressive, is because the fear of man is an obstacle that must be overcome. That's and, right. Yeah. And, and, and so I'm not going to say I'm the best at it, but I'm going to say I am working on it. I've got it under a lot of control. I will tell you that. And so I started going out, passing out tracks in villages, and people started getting saved. Wow, it was nice. And uh, forgiveness came to my heart, and I, joy came back to my heart. And I, wow, it was so nice to be feel the love of God and to, to walk in mercy and kindness of God again. And uh, here, here's what the Bible says, verse 5. We lead every thought and purpose away captive to the obedience of Christ. So I, I learned that obedience is my ticket to the mercy of God. And I don't know, you, you, you want me to talk, tell you what happened next? I went to a village. We had a church going now, you know, and I went to this village. It's, 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 well, it's nice. It's out in the jungle. It's in my world. It's a good thing. And I got out of my truck, and this Indian brother tells me, this is the first dead raising I was involved in. Right here we go. Uh, where I was obedient. Uh, this brother says to me, my son is sick, Brother David. Would you please pray for, pray for him? And so I told him, yeah, I'd, I would, but I, wanna, I want to uh, go and do church first because uh, uh, in Psalms it says that God sent his word to heal. Yes. So to us, the word of God is where the power is. It doesn't reside, even though men do have the power of the Holy Ghost, it's in the word of God where That's the right. power of God is. That's what we believe. And, and so I, uh, we had church and it was hours and hours. Our church is, it went on for like three or four hours. And by the time we got through, he says to me, Brother David, uh, can you still go and pray for my son? I go, yeah, I will. So we, go, we walk through the jungle, right? And it's a good long ways over there. I, I want to say it was like 30, 40 minutes uh, that we were walking. And, and he goes, uh, uh, let me check on, because when I, I started hearing this woman screaming off in the distance, and we went right to the screen. Uh, and I get there, I mean, she's wailing. You know, you can pretty much figure out what went on. Uh well, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I, I want you to know fear came on me again. Fear of man hit me again. Uh, he goes in his house and he comes back out. Now, now, what happened next was one of those destiny, purpose, life-changing moments. He pointed his finger in my face and he said, my son is dead. Now, you're going to do something. All right, now, you know, this, you can bail. You can, you can, you can, you can, say, you can start making excuses. Dude, dude, what, what are you, what are you saying? What, what do I have to? I didn't kill him. I didn't. I, I don't. I'm not a life giver, but the reality is, you are. We sing the little songs. I've got the life of God in me. What's it for? That's right. What, what is it for? What, what is your purpose? What is your, what are you doing? I'm tell you what we're doing. We're walking in power and demonstration of mercy. And yes, most of the time we do fail. But that doesn't have anything to do with being obedient. But this time we didn't fail. Ta-da. Uh, we went in there 
in, in this, uh, I went in that hut, little house, and, and there's that mama, I'm telling you, the scene was, a, was bizarre, okay? The mama's holding this nine-year-old kid, and he's still, he's dead, he's been dead for hours and hours. Some of the village elders are in there, there's these witch doctors, these spiritist healers, and I mean, as soon as they saw me, man, they started cursing me. It was rough. It was a spiritual war. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to yes. the pulling down of strongholds. And so uh, uh, I, I turned around and addressed these uh, enemies of my God, these witch doctors, in the name of Jesus. And then I turned back around to the mama, and she moved. She just very humble people. She moved out of the way, and there's a little dead boy laying in the middle of the floor. And I got down there on top of this kid, and man, I didn't know what to do. I apologize to you. I wish I was a great person with answers. I'm not. What I am is a believer, and I believe Jesus is king. And I started praying for this kid, and I don't know, it went over an hour that we prayed, and just all of a sudden, I was there. I saw his T-shirt bounce. I saw it when his heart kicked back on. And I, I mean, it scared me. I, I, I was more afraid of that, of life, than I was of, of, the, uh, of the witch doctors. And, and just all of a sudden, uh, the little boy came back to life. His skin got warm and got the color back. He started breathing, and he'd been dead for over six hours now. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and he just, his eyes opened up. And he was just a normal little old kid. And the disease that killed him was gone. And I just picked him up because I remembered that uh, Jesus and uh, Elijah and them, whenever they raised the dead, they brought them back to the mother and told them to give them something to eat. So that's what I did. And God raised that kid from the dead in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful testimony. You know, I want to quote to you Matthew chapter 10. And verse 8, where Jesus instructed his disciples to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and to cast out devils. That's and right. I believe that that still applies to his disciples so today. Yes, sir. Brother David was obedient in praying yeah. for this young man and saw a great victory come out of that. Jesus right. also said these words. He said, some of these do not come out but, <laughs> but by fasting, fasting and fasting. prayer. That's right. And I appreciate the emphasis in this, this half hour that we've had with Brother David today that if we want to see results, we got to pursue the kingdom of heaven. We got to pursue the power of God, yep. and we got to go after the things that God has for us. But also the emphasis on obedience. If we can obey Him, brother David, we've got about thirty seconds left. I sense that there are people out there who feel like Jesus. they've gone too far in 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 their disobedience to God. Well, Could you pray for those folks? Well, I just bless you in Jesus' name. I. Uh, I just speak peace to you. I speak forgiveness to you. I speak the mercy of God to you. Jesus loves you. I refute the thoughts and intents of hell against you. In the name of Jesus, blessing and peace of God come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother David, for joining yeah. us with the Beacon Boom. of Truth broadcast. It's been a great blessing to have you the last four sessions. God bless you and your ministry at Freedom Ministries. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to the Beacon of Truth broadcast with your host, Pastor Ruben Esch. If you need prayer or if you've been blessed by today's message, please contact us and let us know you're listening. Write to Beacon of Truth Ministries, P.O. Box 9, Garnett, Kansas, 66032, USA. Again, write to Beacon of Truth Ministries, P.O. Box 9, Garnett, Kansas, 66032, USA. You may also visit us on the web at www.botmi.org or email us at pastor at botmi.org. Thank you for listening and tune in again at the same time next week for another message from the Beacon of Truth broadcast. Have a blessed day.